Started. You can hear me back there. All right. Um, can't hear me yet. All right. Um, well, welcome back for most of you. Um, some of you I don't recognize. So, and I got some emails from some of you uh, that uh, might have, and then some of you have had a had a um, took physics one and then waited a couple semesters now in physics two, and we did you dirty. Because we changed the textbook on you, um, that's what uh, that's what you found out. But anyway, that um, and you'll have to buy the mastering physics vice the Wiley plus thing. So, you know, don't know what to tell you on that. Except sorry, but welcome, welcome. What we're going to do today is um, we're going to talk about we're going to go over the syllabus. Of course, we got to do that. You know, this is kind of one of those Bueller anyone classes. And in the back here. Besides being great tutors, we've got um, Hao and we've got Ting Yi. They will be record. They'll be here every class period. They're here every time. They love it too because um, they have nothing else to do. Um, and so um, they are recording it for our video component of this class. Now the way that'll work is so if you miss this class and you want to. And, and you think there just might be some invaluable information that's on there, uh, you can go to the YouTube site and there'll be the Physics 220 because they will go get this loaded and it'll probably, be, but it's always, there's about a two to three day delay. Okay, so you got to keep that in mind. All right, so what we'll do today is we'll go over the, over the syllabus, we'll ask any, then we'll do, um, we'll ask any questions that we might have. We'll look at, um, by the way, you've already got your first homework assignment loaded, all right? <laughs> Staring you in the face, it's there, it's ready to go, it's due, it's going to be due a week from Wednesday, uh, from a week from Wednesday, because we don't have class on Monday. So let's get that squared away, st uh, figured out first, real quick. There are no labs this week, okay? No labs, all right? And you don't get a drop of physics lab. It's not like chemistry where you get a drop of lab here and there. You don't get a drop of physics lab. They start next week. Now, do we have class on Monday? No. So do we have lab on Monday? No. So those of you who have Monday labs, you will not start your lab until actually the 25th. All right? So we actually might have actually covered the material by the time you have your lab if you have it on Monday. If you have it on Tuesday, we'll be just getting to uh, voltage and finding that stuff um, by then. So, no labs this week. All right, most of you all figured it out. We still had we had a, quite a few 210 and 240 students kind of hanging out in the hallways today, and we had to send them on their way. Say, no, come back next week. Or actually, if you're there for Monday, come back in two weeks. All right. So here is the book. We're, we'll start with basically chapter 15 of the book. Let's just kind of go through this. All right, and I have loaded. Here's for your mastering physics right here. That MP, that MP rigs. That stands for basically, I think, mastering physics rigs. And our code number for this class is 46456. Okay, and you don't have to buy mastering physics again. Your mastering physics should still work. Has anyone tried to log on yet? Okay, all right. Okay, it did it work for this one? And you saw my new assignment staring you in the face. All right, good, all right. We got verification from Casey. All right, that, that works. All right, good. Good deal. All right, so today, this class, um, 
we'll get through chapters 15 through 28 or so of the text and um, basically we'll be studying the preponderance of it will be two-thirds of the class will be on electricity and magnetism and then we'll get into light waves and optics and then we get into the really cool stuff at the very very end that's that um, piques everybody's interest when we get into relativity and quantum mechanics at the very end. I've never been able to get to quantum. I think we'll be able to finally pull it off. Now, some of you, I do apologize for the layout of the room, okay? This is not very good, all right? Um, but this is the best that they gave us, okay? All right, um, and uh, I, don't want, I don't know what else to say besides get here early, and then you can sit in the middle, okay? And it's also not very conducive for tests either, but we'll get to that in a minute too. All right. All right. So anyway, so we'll cover electricity, magnetism, because we will do a lot of stuff off the board. Um, our, you know how our quizzes work. You know our quizzes will be off this thing too. Um, we won't have one today. The, today's kind of a freebie. All right. So basically, it's physics, the study of Mother Nature, class attendance, participation. I think is still very important. Um, we will have a daily quiz. I know I said daily last time we had like 11, all right, out of 30 some odd class periods. So that's a, it's a relative term, but I'll try and have something um, at least twice a week for you. Um, so, and you get a drop three. Okay, so we'll t talk more about the quizzes later. Um, and they're really just kind of attendance things. Those of you that have had this before know, okay, if I show up, I have a pulse, I'm going to get a maximum score on that. All right. Um, even if you don't have a pulse, because I'm not going to grade the damn things. You're just going to turn them in and you get the, get the credit for them. All right. So now, um, so now your grades. Notice I've shifted this just a little bit. We've kind of played, uh, tweaked this a little bit. Homework assignments now were 30% instead of 40. Okay, so it kind of takes a little bit of the pressure off getting those homework assignments in. All right, and um, lab is still 25%. Uh, we'll have four exams, no drops, okay, no, no drops. And, of course, the daily quizzes are 15. All right, there's the good old grading scale. Homework. We're going to use the Mastering Physics. We've all been there, done that. Um, if you're new to Mastering Physics, you can just go to it. And um, you s log on, and you just go to the assignment, and it'll walk you through it on how to do it. Um, we'll probably answer two or three of the questions today, depending on what time it is. Oh, yeah, I forget. you got to remind me. I get carried away. I think this is now in 15 minutes. We're only here for 50, three times a day. Okay, three times a week, not three times a day. That'd be, that'd be terrible. But anyway, um, so... You can drop three homework assignments. I'm not going to help you out this semester and load th and give you a max score on three and let you drop three. But you do get to drop three homework assignments, okay? And daily quizzes um, are 15%, and you get to drop three of those. So you can miss three class periods, all right? And it won't hurt your, hurt your grade. Labs, there are no drop labs, all right? And remember, make sure you get make sure before you leave your first lab that you get your lab instructor's email address, okay? Because like I've told all my classes before, even though I roll over sometimes, but labs to me are windows. I don't do them. That's between you and your lab instructor, okay? And the questions on there too are between you and um, some of the questions are a little bit hard. Google. Just Google the question. <laughs> Okay, there you go. And, and, and I say that not to so you just copy it down, um, but you're actually going to learn something if you go to that. But you'll see some of the questions are going to be like, whoa, I don't even know what he's asking. Guess what? I don't either. So Google it, and then you'll be good. All right. And remember, the lab, it can be frustrating and everything else, but you all are chemistry. How many chemistry majors do I have? Quite a few. Biology? Ooh, there's the majority. Okay, so, so you know about working in messy, goopy labs. They just don't work very well a lot of times. That's, that's just the way science works. Okay, drop policy for homework and quizzes. All right, I'll just read this. The drops are intended for you to use at your discretion. 
I put them in place because I know life happens. In other words, relatives get sick, you get sick, cars break down, family emergencies take place, the, the cat has kittens, the person you were dating that you thought was the one turned out to be a two-timing jerk, so you spent a week holed up in your room eating ice cream and watching reruns of Gossip Girl. So, we missed a week of class. All these and many more are why we allow three dropped um, both homework and quizzes, okay? So, if on the first day of 65 degrees of weather, and believe me, they're coming back. We're not falling away from the sun, regardless of what you thought last week. Um, and you decide not to come to class, miss the quiz, and don't do the homework, that's your choice. However, if you have these drops, then life happens. You don't get to make those up, okay? So even though um, your excuses might be legitimate. In other words, just don't skip for the sake of skipping, and then get sick later on and go, well, but... I, I was really sick that time. Okay. Sorry. All right. So anyway. All right. Now then. So exams. There are four exams. Are given during the semester. With one of these four occurring during finals week. Oh yeah. And we'll get to the finals. When, when, and it's not a final. It's the last test. Okay. Um. And you all had me last semester. We'll do them the exact same way. Eight and a half sheet by 11. And um, it'll be slightly painful. I only can have, do it for 50 minutes. So this time, we don't have an hour and 15 minutes. So it'll, it'll be, really be fastballs down the middle. You know, the big ideas. Of course, I always say that. And then you get the test, you go, what the hell? Uh, you didn't even talk about this. But, um, oh well. Uh, I thought I did, but anyway. Um, okay, so you can bring a front and a half, front and back, eight and a half by 11 sheet formulas, theorems, laws, phone number, the key person sitting next to you, whatever it takes, okay? Um, but that's it, just one, one sheet of paper and bring your calculators. And bring your calculators to class because we might have to compute some things. All right, now, for the sake of your planning and stuff like that, because I know a lot of you are on like pre-med councils and, and in certain societies and all that kind of stuff, and you're planning things. These are the dates. Now, this is the week before spring break. Okay, so there's nothing. So you're going to take your third test, and you're going to go on spring break, and then you'll take your last test during finals. Isn't that lovely? 8 o'clock in the morning. I know most human beings under the age of 25 don't function until noon, but um, it's still going to be at 8 in the morning. That's when we're scheduled. and It'll be in here. All right. And that'll be exam four. Okay, so those of you who have not had me before, here it is. This is when the exam is. I don't want any emails. Otherwise, I'll, I will flunk you. If you send me an email, say, when's the last test? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. This is kind of student uh, makeup exams are go only given in extreme cases. Dates for the exam. Um, is yours, uh, okay. Did I say anything about making up the exam on the last day of the final? No. Good. I took that out. Good. All right. So I know things happen. I know things, things, things come up. Things happen. Um, some of you might be on athletic teams and you go away. But we, we can work those kinds of things out. All right. Um, oh, I said make up on the day of the final. Ah, scratch that. Just scratch that. Um, I got that idea from a friend of mine. And, she was an English teacher. Yeah, they, they can do funky stuff like that because anybody can walk in and pass an English final, right? Anyway, sorry. But um, the, uh, this is how I felt. Um, so, so we'll make up the exams. when, And then some of you that have international flights and stuff like that, we'll, we'll try and we can take them early, like during that stop day or something like that. You can take that last exam, get it out of your way. Because I know, especially, it's really bad during like trips overseas. The difference in plane ticket just in one day difference can be like $2,000 or something like that. The closer you get to 
peak travel times. Okay, extra credit. All right, after messing with extra credit for 10 semesters, I found it was more trouble than it was worth. All right, Psst. I'm not doing it anymore. Okay, this is college, not high school. But the only difference at times is college has ashtrays. But other than that, um, but I'm no longer in the extra credit games. But I do like to encourage you to do some outside reading if you've got uh, some time um, and may make it a part of the curriculum, but not now. But I do encourage you to go to the observatory, top of Royal Hall. It opens late March and operates on Friday nights until uh, at first dark. Okay? And we do have our society, our very own Society of Physics students. Oh, wait. Uh oh. There is an extra credit opportunity. I don't know how I'm going to do this. But we have this the Boy Scouts are coming. We blows on wheels. <laughs> Luckily, I don't have anything to do, but, would do with it. But I will. Um, but see, here's where I run into a problem it's on a Saturday. And we're going to need you on a Friday night, and I'll explain more of it later. But so for this class, I think I might have to give extra credit because those people who do that will get 20 points extra credit. And if you work on Fridays and can't come on Saturday, and I can't use all 120 of you, then that's not fair to the others who didn't get that opportunity. So guess what? I got to do extra credit with you all because of that, because of the Boy Scouts. <laughs> all right. <coughs> so. Well, I'll, I'll publish an addendum to this syllabus then and say, fine, you can do extra credit because um, I did promise one of our former professors who now left us to go do the big bucks at Honeywell. Um, anybody still is involved in the um, Weeblows on Wheels thing and that I would provide him 10 to 15 students. And, and they'll feed you on Friday night. They'll give you pizza, no beer, because you'll be working with the Boy Scouts, so don't want to teach them any bad habits, but, um, but they will have pizza for you, or, and they will feed you on Friday night and Saturday, and you'll get 20 points extra credit, so keep that in mind. That's like the first weekend in February. More on that later, and then I will publish a different extra credit thing for you all to do if you choose to do so. All right, Society of Physics students meets. Uh, they do fun, like little physics things. All right. Blackboard, your lecture notes are there, syllabus of the course, academic dishonesty, no big deal, we just don't do it. Um, I think this course is designed so that, but I know how the labs work, some of you have friends that have had this before, and you go, hey, what's your lab look like? Okay, good, we got it. Um, not because we've had the same lab manual for 15 years, other than that, um, but anyway, just Keep it on the low, low, all right? But anyways, but don't cheat. Um, you don't learn anything when you do that. And eventually, I believe in the, there is the cheating karma bus out there. It will catch you someday, and it will run you over. It may not be in this class, but some, sometime you it will catch up to you. But anyway, we will have the tutors and everything else um, <coughs> in room 259. And let me go back real quick, and we're done now with... The thing, office hours. I'm gonna. I've got to get my own dissertation and stuff written this uh, semester and next semester and stuff like that. So I'm gonna be pretty. Now, if you call and or if you email me for an appointment, we those can always be worked out. But I really can't have walk-in policy. But I'll be there from 12 to basically 12 to 1:30. So I I should have this class ready to go by then. And I know you'll be on campus then. How many of you have got Orgo right before this? <laughs> ha! All right. That's good. I guess I won't be giving my test on Wednesday, on Friday, because I know you guys will have your test on Friday. And we'll have four people in here on Friday for that lecture. But we continue to go ahead. All right. Anyway, all right. I've talked to Killer Killway about that, but it is not But she says, that on her test, that she can go in there early if you want. She starts them early? OK, yeah, so keep that in mind. All right. And like I've said before, how hard can Orgo be? It's got carbon. It's a hexagon, carbon. Psst. There we go. Let's move on. All right. OK, now, any questions? Any questions? 
We've covered most everything. All right, let's take a look at basically what we're going to do in this class, all right? Uh, where we're going to start. Now let's start with a common thing that happens, all right? We're going we're gonna to walk across the carpet. Now, I used to do this to my poor cat, all right? Walk across the carpet. Eh, 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 eh. Now, what? Whoa. Okay, that wasn't supposed to happen quite like that. Hold on a second. Let me get some volume here. Pump up the volume. Do they have it on mute or something? Where? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Thank you, Abigail. But now I got it. All right, now, anyway, what, what, what's happening is, especially on a, on a, when it's very humid, when there's a lot of humidity in the air, those of you all have had chemistry, you know that water molecules are positively charged, right? Just a little bit? Got a little bit of a positive? Or are they negatively charged? I can't remember. Are they negative? Or both? Well, there's ionization in the air, which is positive charges. Okay? And so the electrons measure up with those, so you've got a bunch of neutral charge. However, in the winter time, when you've got the heat on, it gets very dry. Some of us... Um, suffer from nosebleeds and all kinds of stuff because it gets so dry and everything. But when you walk across the carpet, because you got all those free electrons sitting there, okay, and then you kick them up, all right, and then what they do is they distribute themselves evenly over your uh, throughout your body, and then you come up to this thing, which is a good conducting uh, surface, all right, it conducts electricity well. Um, copper doorknob and you go up and you touch it gazouch right sorry about that okay now that I got now the sound works okay got your attention there all right the electrons rush they go to this positive charge thing you can see it better so that's kind of the stuff here with the balloons okay all right here's a sweater that's basically neutrally charged for the most part. But if I bring this balloon over here, I'm going to wipe all those electrons off, just like John Travolta did on his carpet. All right. Now then, it's negatively charged. All right. It's got a negative charge on. Whoa. And it wants to go back over to those positive charges over there. Now, this is a wall. Okay that again is neutrally charged. In other words, we got for every positive charge, there's a negative char uh, electron associated with it. So it's neutrally charged. But what happens if I bring this balloon over to this wall? What's going to happen? Yeah. In other words, the positive charges st stick around. But what happens to the negative charges? Yeah, they're going away. Because like charges do what? Repel each other. And positive charges attract. Okay, there's the first six chapters of this semester right there in a nutshell. Okay, positive charges attract, negative charges, re, uh, uh, positive, like charges attract, opposite charges repel each other, and then there's electric fields that they travel in that work just like uh, gravity, except that it's electricity. And it's much, 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 much stronger than... Uh, it's the strong electrical force, okay? It's much stronger than gravity, all right? If it wasn't, guess what happened? We'd all be just molecules just smashed all over the ground and everything, all right? So, anyway, and it's strong nuclear force and all that kind of stuff, which you chemistry people know better than I do. All right, so that's what's going on. So if we bring this over here, then the wall becomes kind of neutrally charged. Let that go, whoop. And then it kind of goes back over to the sweater. All right, so that's basically uh, what we're going to be doing in this class. So, with that in mind, okay, with that in mind, let's go to, let's make it worth your while to come in. So, if you came in today, let's go to, Astrain Physics, let's log in. Let's go to your first homework assignment. Let's answer a few of the questions. I'll probably get them wrong because I get this all confused. Yeah. I was at the bookstore today and they said the uh, access card is not available. Is it not available? Yeah. Why, they sold out or something? Oh, my. 
Well, I guess you'll be late on the first homework assignment. I have to do. Th I I might have to adjust that. So, but this, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. I'll I'll make adjustments. If uh, you can go online and buy it if you want. Uh, so you're new to the class, right? You didn't have me last semester. No, not last semester. That's what I thought. You look familiar. Okay. Um, how many else of you don't have a book? Oh my. Oh dear. You can get the access. You know, yeah, so you can go to Mastery Physics. Yeah, just type in Mastery Physics on Google and, and click this, and then you can, you can buy it there. I think it's, how much is it online? $105? $50? Yeah, if you have to access cards. Oh, if you have the book already, it's only 50 Okay. But the bookstore is selling you the book without the card in it? Well, yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Now my head's hurting. I don't, I don't want to know any more about it. Oh, sh Okay, bear with. I forgot this one is different. Gonna work? Yes. All right. Courses. Let's go to. This is all your stuff from last semester. Here we go. This is us. Here's chapter 15 assignment, and is incomplete. Oh, good. It's a it's a new grounding thing. All right. So here we go. Let's take a look at our first. Let's just do like the first two problems. There's 16 of them. Wow. He went nuts. He lost his mind. But, but some of them are multiple, multiple guests like this. All right, now, so here's the situation. Here's the situation. The learning goals. To understand interactions between grounded conductor and, charge, and a charged ball that is repeatedly brought into contact with it. Okay, so what happens? Now, I didn't give you the full blown lecture, but so this is just kind of, um, we're just kind of finding our way here a little bit. Uh, and what happens is, if I bring in that negative charged, here's the picture. Notice, this is a neutrally charged rod, okay? Now, if I bring in a negatively charged thing here and touch it to it, what's going to happen? These positive charges are going to rush on to that negatively charged sphere, right, and neutralize it. And so it's going to lose some of its positive charge. So then when I take that ball away, what happens? it will become, this thing will become a little bit negatively charged. If I do it enough times, this thing will become very negatively charged. Okay? That's by, um, touch, by, by the act of touching it. Okay? All right, this problem explores the behavior of charge of grounded conductors. Okay? So we take as an example a long conducting rod suspended by a conducting wire that are connected to a ground. Assume that the rod is initially electrically neutral. For the convenience, we'll refer to the left end of the rod as A. Here's A. And this right side is B. Good. I'm glad we got that straightened out. Okay, now. Okay, and the answer for this problem, strongly attracted means attracted repel with a force of magnitude similar to that which would exist between two charged balls. Well, you don't know what that means yet either. So, bear with, so here we go. Let me explain that. Do you all remember this? Those of you sitting over there, I apologize for this, but do you all remember this? Do you remember that? F equals big G M1 times M2 over R squared. All right. And we also have this guy. Now then, that's for who? Gravity. Right? That's the force of gravity in some field. Now, we've got this. F equals K times Q1 times Q2 over R squared, where Q is the charge of two objects. Okay? Two objects have a certain charge. So that means there's a force between them. It looks just like this. It, it's kind of amazing how that works. As a matter of fact, at Newton's time, during Newton's time when he came up with this, people thought they already knew this. And they thought that that's what 
attracted people was the actually the electrical force, not a gravitational force. But we Newton was using electrically neutral things that were still attracting somehow. So anyway, so things if they're strongly attracted, that means they actually behave in this manner of having two charged. So they're strongly attracted. All right. So a small ball. So let's just read this first question. A small ball is given a negative charge. And then it's brought near. Okay, so I'm going to bring this. So pretend my little pointer here, this arrow is negatively charged ball coming in here. So it's brought near. So it's just coming near. So what does that mean? What's going to happen to these negative charges right here? They're going to go this way. The positive charges are going to come this way. Right? Now they're not going to jump over. Right? Because I don't have enough charge here. If I had plenty of charge here, all of a sudden it builds up, builds up, huge negative charge, okay? Or we get a bunch of ions in the sky because of rain clouds, a bunch of positive charges up there, huge amount of positive charges building up. The Earth has an iron core, so it's got kind of a negative charge to it. What happens during a thunderstorm? Lightning, <laughs> it burns right through the atmosphere, okay, and shoots up, and that's what causes lightning, okay? which is massive amount of coulombs, which we'll get to on Wednesday. I'll explain all this to you. But um, let's just see if we can work our way through how this would work. OK. What happens to the end of the rod when the ball approaches it closely the first time? Is it strongly repelled? Is it strongly attracted? Weakly attracted? Weakly repelled? Neither attracted nor repelled. Which would happen? OK. All right, got a negative thing coming in here. What's going to happen? It's going to be repelled or attracted. Think of the balloon. What happened to the balloon? Was it attracted or repelled from the wall? It was attracted to it, right? And so, and it does have the force. So let's go with strongly attracted. Okay, and let's see what happens. Please be right. If it's not, we're going home. Okay, good. That's right. Okay, and this one, this one has hints. So, and, and I don't penalize you for using hints or anything like that on homework. So if you want to go to the hints, you can do that. All right. So now, it says, consider what happens when the small metal ball is repeatedly given a negative charge. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to charge it negative, bring it up here, boom, touch. All right. So when I touch it here, boom, it's going it, to, positive charge is going to come off. It's going to get, it's going to build up a negative charge here. All right. So this eventually, this thing, this rod is going to build up a huge negative charge because I keep touching this negative ball here. So the positive charges come flying off. All right. Okay. And then after great many contacts with the charged ball, how is any charge on the rod arranged? Okay. So now, do you remember the John Travolta picture of the electrons when he rubbed his foot? What happened to those electrons? Yeah, they distribute it evenly. So, is there anywhere where it says it distributes evenly here? Yeah. Let's try that B answer here. Boy, I hope it's right too. Let's see. Boom. Submit. Please be right. No! Oh! Now I'm lost. Recall that the rod is ground. Oh! The rod's grounded. So that means, okay, so if the rod is grounded, you know what happens? What happens to the negative charge? It runs to the ground, okay? It runs to the ground. So, therefore, it becomes what? Neutral. I hope that's right. If not, oh, good. Whew. I forgot it's grounded. Whew. Yes, Caleb, what is that? It was strongly, wasn't it? Because there's a force there that we can feel. There's an actual force. Okay? And we'll get to that later. That, to be honest, when I first took this event, it's not going to be that big a charge. It's probably be pretty weak. Uh, they're actually talking about like the weak nuclear force type thing. So it's strongly. In other words, we can we could actually measure it. We could actually measure it. And it is attractive. So that's why they call it strong. Because I, I answered it the same way. Your intuition was right. OK. How does end A of the rod react when the recharged ball approaches it after a great many previous contacts with A? 
Okay, it's recharged. It's negatively charged. I'm going to say it's going to be strongly attracted again. Same thing's going to happen because it is grounded. Please be right. Whew. Okay, good. I don't know if you all learned anything from that, but I did. All right. In other words, what happened here, what, what's happening here is how does, how does the end of A, okay, since it's grounded, every time it's got the excess negative charge runs off and it's going to stay neutral. Okay. That's what's going on. All right. We'll get on the second question. We'll do question two to today, too. We'll have time. Okay, so how does end B... Is this nightmare almost over? Yes. Okay, how does end B of the rod react when the charge ball approaches after a great many previous contacts with A? Oh, okay. So I make a bunch of contacts, make a bunch of contacts. All right, so it stays neutral. So I bring the negative over here. It's going to be strongly attracted again. Okay, it's going to be strongly attracted. Submit. Please be right. Yes. Okay. It's because it's grounded, it's going to stay neutrally charged. Okay. All right. So let's continue. Let's do question number two. So make it, because this is kind of the, the big idea for the first part. Aha. Now notice this one. We've taken an example of long suspended by insulating strings. In other words, since these are insulated strings, guess what? It's not grounded anymore. This was the picture that I had in my mind when we, when we first started this. So, so this time it's not grounded. All right? So when I bring a small ball, it's given a negative charge, and it's brought up here, right here. So what's going to happen? Well, they're actually kind of short right here. Well, no, because it's meant, A eh. bunch of positive charge comes up here. Okay, and the negative charge kind of goes away. So I'm going to say that it's strongly attracted based on the same kind of wishy-washy answer I gave Caleb. Eh, because they said it was going to be strongly. Okay, all right. Yes, the charge seemed to be induced by the presence of the electric field, so that's an induced charge. And what we were doing before was charged by contact. All right. All right, so now then, after a great many contacts, okay, so now we touch this negative charge here a bunch of times, touch negative, basically what it does is it, it's going to pull positive charges off this guy, okay, well actually what's going to happen is there's going to wind up being more negative charges there, okay, after a great many, how is the charge on the rod arranged, there should be, this is what I was after before, since it's not grounded, since it's not grounded, and those those uh, those negative that excess negative charge has nowhere to go, it's just going to be excess negative charge is going to collect, okay, on the thing, and so it should be there should be um, hopefully this will be right. Yes, see I practiced this in my office before I came. I made sure I got did these. Because I bombed the first one because I wasn't thinking of it being a grounded thing. Okay. All right. How does int A? So now here we go. We got two questions left. As we're leaning in, trying to see what. What? Yeah, this is kind of rough. All right. Uh, how does int A of the rod react when the charge ball approaches it after a great many previous contacts? Uh, with assume the phrase "great many" means that the total charge on the rod dominates. Any charge movement induced by the near presence of a charge ball. Okay, so, in other words, I keep bringing in contact here, boom, boom. So all the positive charge keeps running off. Actually, we'll learn later that positive charges don't move. It's electrons that move. It's those free valence electrons and stuff like that. Conducting things like Southwest Airlines. The electrons are free to move about the wire type thing. Okay. All right, but the positive charges, they're kind of stuck. They're stuck. They're stuck in the middle of that nucleus of that atom, so they can't go anywhere. But those electrons, they're just floating around in that little quantum cloud out there. So we, can go where, we can do whatever we want. But for this problem, for getting into the initial study of electrostatics, we're going to say that these positive charges are coming off here, making this neutral. But basically what's happening is these negative charges are running off and joining these positive charges, 
that they can find over here, so it's making it very negatively charged. So therefore, when I bring it in, it'll be strongly repelled, I hope, because it's built up a bunch of negative charge here. So here we go. Let's see what happens. Please be right. Otherwise, I've lost all credibility. What little I had. There we go. Correct. All right. Last but not least, how does the end of the react? Okay, so here again. So here again. If this has a bunch of negative charge on it, is the negative charge, since I kept touching it over here, is it all balled up down here? No, it's uniformly distributed throughout. So if I bring a negative thing up here, it will also be strongly repelled, too. It should be. OK. And after we have our first official lecture on Wednesday, it should all make sense. Submit. Let's see if we're right. Yes. All right. So, so it wasn't bad. We got, so today, we finished. Um, we discussed the syllabus. We got two homework problems done. It's the only two I'm ready to do at this juncture. And um, I'll see you on Wednesday.